Hello, my peeps. It's me, Clarissa Crow, one more time. It's the last week in August, and so I decided to get out of the bathtub and share with you another one of my favorite sacred spaces, which is my beautiful garden. Amani's talk title today is called Entertaining Angels, and it's all about looking for the divine in everyone and in everything. And when we look for it, we will find it because there is truly no spot where God is not fully present. One of the songs on this week's playlist is Thank You by Alanis Morissette. And for me, the video just beautifully illustrates how when we open our eyes to the good that is always seeking to give itself to us, we open ourselves to receive all of the love and beauty that is there, even in the most unexpected places. So look for angels in your life today. And remember that you are an angel too. Love and blessings. The talk to laugh, the talk to love. You go to hug when push comes to shove. Turn the cheek, forget, walk away. Tomorrow is another day. Life is short, helping hands to say, a holier than the ones who To my people, yeah. You're my soul, you're my roots, you're my family, my life, you're my roots. To my people, yeah. Everybody, every green, every life, every home and everything. To my people, yeah. You're my life, you're my soul, you're my life, you're pushing me to help me go. To my people, yeah. I bow down to your heart of gold. To my people, yeah. There's a legend that Mary Magdalene was lifted up seven times a day by the angels. And it's known that in the last 30 years of her life, she remained in a cave known as Les Saintes Bombes in France, in the south of France, where angels gathered her up and transported her to the peaks of the mountain range, to the rarefied air, where their messages could be heard more clearly. This is from Megan Watterson's book, Mary Magdalene Revealed. And Megan goes on to say, remember that an angel is simply a thought that lifts us up from out of ourselves, from out of those cages the ego would prefer us to remain within. I love this so much. You know, there's all these famous depictions of, of Mary Magdalene being lifted by the angels, by four angels, and, and it's part of this legend. And I love this idea that it's our thoughts, it's our beliefs that actually lift us out of misunderstanding, a false narrative, and that these angels are available all the time, seven times a day. Seven times a day. I love this idea. I think about how in the Muslim tradition, you know, there's the prayers five times a day. And this being lifted by the angels seven times a day. And when I know in my own life how easily distracted I am by the noise and the stuff and the goings on and the circumstances and the humans. Oh, the humans are so distracting. And that to stay lifted, to stay connected to the good, seven times a day, allowing an angel, an angelic thought, to lift me back into the truth of who I am. It probably would take seven times a day. But think about that for a minute. Think about the kind of commitment it takes to entertain angels seven times a day. I mean, but what else do we do seven times a day? I don't even eat seven times a day. I'm sure we breathe more than seven times a day. And maybe we open a door, stand up, sit down, seven times a day. But you know what I do know that we do more than seven times a day? Think crappy thoughts. Probably say crappy things. 
And yet we have this opportunity, if we so choose, to entertain the angels. We could flip that script. So I'm going to ask you to take a minute. Take a minute and think about how much time in a day you spend entertaining angels or you spend entertaining crappy. Like, think about it. Think about how much time you spend rolling around a fear or a resentment or a doubt or a what you know some crappy thought how much time do you think that takes up in your day i think if we got honest with ourselves it'd be more than 7 7 times in a day i know for me it could be 7 times in a half an hour and i've been thinking about this a, a lot like what a game changer it is in our lives if we could unbalance the scales, the amount of time and energy and attention we give to the crappy thoughts, which probably, you know, if we were balancing scales, and the amount of time we give to the angels, to the, to the uplifting, to the true thoughts, to the beliefs that align us with our true nature, to the thoughts that align us with our true nature. So if this is the angels and this is the crappy, I think most days, most hours in here. But what would happen if we let them not only balance out but we gave more time and attention to the uplifting thought, belief. I, I truly believe the world would look like a different world. I believe the things that we would be drawn to participate in, the actions we would likely take would be really different. I was also thinking about this driving. I think and drive a lot. I don't drive a lot, actually, and I don't love to drive, but when I do. And I was driving, and I was thinking about when, when young people are learning how to drive, and I remember when I was learning how to drive, I had this great driving instructor who, swear to God, looked exactly like George Burns, dressed in sort of like George Burns' character, the suit and the hat, the fedora, had a cigar, like the whole nine. Anyways, adored him. And I remember him saying, where you put your attention, you're going to drive towards. So if you're looking over there at what's happening on the side of the road, you're going to find yourself drifting that way. And man, oh man, was he right. Our thoughts and beliefs do the same thing. We may think we have our hands on the wheel of life and we are heading in this particular direction. And we've got a vision board, we've done the prayer, we have a spiritual mind treatment, and this is, this is the thing. We are moving this way. We're going to have an abundant, love-filled, luxurious experience of life. And that, that's where I am steering towards. And yet my thoughts... My thoughts are over here on all the shit I don't have. My thoughts are over here on how crappy the world is. My thoughts are over here on the, you know, terrible, truly terrible nature of humanity. Hmm. Hmm. Which way are you going to steer? If your thoughts... Over here, this hand is crappy thoughts. Are getting the time and the attention. Then this is the way we're headed. We can't help it. We're not, it's not even conscious most of the time. Ah. To become conscious. 
It takes time and attention and practice, much like learning how to drive a car. We had to learn how to keep our attention in front of us on where we were headed. We had to learn not to get distracted. We had to be aware of our surroundings, Defensive Driving 101, but not to be distracted by them. Got to have awareness. We're not in spiritual bypass and pretending they don't exist. We want to know if there's a car speeding at us, heading, you know, way too fast and going to run a light. We need to be aware of that. So we can't put the blinders on and just power forward. But if all we are aware of is what's going on over here, then absolutely for sure, that's where we're headed. This, my friends, is what it means to entertain angels for the benefit of our consciousness, for the benefit of what we become aware of and what we choose to put our attention on as we become more and more aware of the holy wholeness of life. That is how we make the desired outcome so. The desired outcome of good. The goodness that we all long for. But we've got to be willing to put in the time. Put in the attention. We must be willing to be lifted by the angels seven times a day. I mean, I love this idea. Doesn't it sound fun? To have an uplifting thought that literally lifts us to the rarefied air. I loved that too. Where we could hear, hear the good's messages more clearly. I mean, that's a game changer. Think about that for a minute. If we made it our practice to be lifted out of unawareness, to be lifted out of false narratives, to be lifted out of misbelief and misperception and misunderstanding, we become closer to, more aligned with, the good that we really truly desire and the messages, the ideas, the ahas that are gonna help us take the next right loving action. It's all the same flow and dance, but it does require, it does require a willingness to do what must be done, to get out of the way, to be lifted out of the muck, to expand our conscious awareness of the good Right? That is, that is what we're after in the spiritual transformation journey. Because I think sometimes, you know, of course we want to feel better and we want our lives to work better. And they will. And you will. There is no other possibility when you allow yourself to be uplifted seven times a day and entertain the angels. Of course your money is going to get right. Of course, the right relationships are going to be resonant for you. Of course, your health will be better. Because you are working from a wisdom place, a divine place of, of, of knowing that is not stuck in misunderstanding or misbelief. You know, maybe we think that spiritual transformation is somehow not very practical or relevant, you know? I hear people say all the time, well, you know, I love that idea, but, you know, we still, you know, there's a this over here that's nothing to do with the goodness. That's that thing again, veering us off the road. But 
entertaining angels. God, that sounds fun. Doesn't that sound fun? Like a dinner party with all those uplifting, juicy, good thoughts and beliefs. Invite them to the table seven times a day. Which then makes me also aware that if we got into a practice and a habit like that, we might have to re-evaluate our priorities and how we're spending our time. I think it's entirely worth it. How about you? Hello, Reverend Amani Malaika here. Thank you so much for your support of the work we've been doing. Text to Give is a simple way to support what we're doing, transforming lives and communities. Be love in action. As we breathe together into this moment, I am aware that we are being breathed effortlessly, tenderly, eternally. And we are being breathed by the one life, the amazing life force that is animating all living things. And so we are intricately connected to all living things through this breath of life. Ah, that is incredible, amazing. How wonderful. And yet at the same time, we are expressing our own uniqueness, our own essential part of the whole. And so I am know that, knowing that all of that is happening right here today, right now, in this service. It is happening through each one of us as we're evolving into our next great expression, right now. It is happening through the community coming together. And what a great day this is. It's great because we are alive. And so I am knowing that the fullness of life is present here. It is present in this next great expression and evolution of each of us today and our community. And I am just knowing that it is helping to provide nourishment for the greater energy in the world as well. And I declare it good. And so it is. From Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind. If we look at love long enough, we shall become lovely. For this is the way of love. God is love. If we gaze longingly at joy, it will make its home with us, and we shall enter its portals and be happy. If we seek the divine in people, we shall find it and be entertaining angels unawares. I love that so much. Be entertaining angels unawares. Because when we look at love, like really look deeply at love and all the ways that love shows up and all the ways that we understand this concept of love as God is love. We will become lovingly because we've put our attention on it. We have steered ourselves deep into the experience of love. And when we look at joy deeply, and when we decide joy is the destination and I am going to put my entire attention and mind and body on joy. And when we choose to see God in the people, all the people, when we choose that, we shall find God in all the people. We must be willing to do the, the intentional 
the intentional looking, the intentional entertaining of angels, the entertaining of angels in our thoughts, those beautiful uplifting angelic thoughts, and the entertaining of angels in people. I remember, gosh, this was many, many years ago, I went to a workshop with um, Don Miguel Ruiz and Jose Ruiz, his son, and I remember him talking about, Jose talking about that we were all angels on earth, that every single one of us was an angel doing the work of love, of God, of spirit, of the good. And I love this idea so much. I love this idea so much. If we assumed, if we walked out of, into the world every day assuming that every person we were coming into contact with was an angel, how might that change our day? How might that change how you roll through the day? How you speak to people? How you even allow your face to change when you encounter another angel? And I love this idea too, because it becomes fun, right? It becomes fun to be entertaining angels unaware, as Ernest says. They don't even have to know that you're treating them like an angel. But I guarantee you, you'll be increasing joy in the world. I guarantee you, you will be increasing harmony in the world. Bringing to life the goodness as the goodness is bringing itself to you. In that constant, infinite flow. I love, love, that declaration from Ernest Holmes and published in 1927, we believe in the goodness, the loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of God to all. I love that so much. I mean, there are many other declarations. The goodness. Mary Magdalene knew it way back when. That's what she named God. And I'm going to claim that too. And I invite you to do the same. I look forward to being with you in person or online. I love you so much.